Today we're going to practice how to create a cube using GeoGebra as well as how to create a rectangular prism, both of which we'll compare after the fact. So if you take a look at these instructions, it says to create a cube using the tools provided. This is a list of my tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by clicking on this gray area, which is the plane. And I want you to realize that this is broken up into three sections, the red line, the green line, and the blue line, in that order, R, G, B. The red line is going to represent the x-axis, the green line will represent the y-axis, and the blue line is going to represent Z, which is the z-axis. Okay. I can click and move this around so that I can change the view. I'm going to put it on purpose so that it appears to be overhead and that this way it looks almost perfectly like my X and Y axis. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my toolbar and I'm going to select this tool and click on cube. I will place my cube right at the origin and across the way to number two. Once I have that, I always go back to the arrow so that I can move it around and see what the effects are. This cube can be changed in terms of size. It can even be flipped around. So any of these blue dots allow me to change the position from where it originally landed. And I can adjust it any way I want. So the last thing I'm going to do with this object is I'm going to create a net around it. Think of the net as adding a skin to your shape. So here it is. I'm going to go to this tool, click on net, select the object one time, and then go back to my arrow tool. Now, the cool thing about this net is that if I click on one of these black dots, I can make it look like it's wrapping my object. Okay. So now I have the original. I can go ahead and click on it again, and I can unwrap the object as well. Okay. So it's a little bit tricky sometimes, but it can be done. And no matter what is the size of my object, the net will adjust to it. And that's it. That's how you would create a cube with a net surrounding it. Okay. Now, as I scroll down, I'm going to go to the next section. And on this one, you'll notice that it specifically says to create a rectangular prism. So what is the difference between a cube and a rectangular prism? So We'll see if we can see the differences as we construct it. First of all, it's going to be made differently. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come over here. I'll adjust my picture so that it looks something like this. I can see my X and Y axis. I'm going to start with two random points, one here and one there. There's no particular reason for it. Just this is where I decided to place them. And I'm going to add a set of perpendicular lines. Now, the perpendicular particular lines have to be placed in a particular spot. So click there, select my first point, and anywhere on the y-axis, select the same point, then anywhere on the x-axis. Repeat the process for the second point. Here, go to the x-axis. Here, go to the y-axis. And that's going to give me something that appears to look like a rectangle or square in the middle. When I click on my arrow tool, and I click on any of these points, I'll quickly notice that I can adjust it any way that I want. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon, which is a shape. And I'm going to start from this corner and go in order clockwise to every single corner until I go back to the original corner. Now, this is going to create, I go back to my arrow, this is going to create my rectangle, which is just a flat shape. And so the next thing I'll do is I'm going to click on this tool and I'm going to select extrude to prism. Now extrude to prism basically means that I'm going to take my flat shape and I'm going to make it in a sense pop out. I'm going to generate it. I'm going to create it. Okay. So let me click and let me show you. Click on extrude to prism, select the area where the rectangle is. The altitude I'm going to purposely put to. 
press OK. And then I'm going to notice that something seems to have shown up. Go back to my arrow. And I'm going to click on any of these. Well, let me adjust this here so I can see more of it. Okay, there's my shape. It looks, looks like it's underneath. I'm going to click on one of these black dots. Let me see which one I can find. And now I can visually make it look like it's above ground. Notice that I can still adjust it. These points can still be adjusted and kind of put any way that I want. And you'll notice that this is now more of a rectangle. Okay. Before I continue, though, I'm going to get rid of these solid black lines. Click here on this little triangle piece. Select the little cog. This is my settings tool. And then all you have to do is click on the black line and deselect show object. Click on the next black line. Same thing. Next black line. Same thing. Last black line. Same thing. And now I have a picture without any of the extra information. I'll click on the X and on the triangle once again. And now this is the image that I have. I'm going to finish. And for every picture that I create today, I'm going to generate the skin around it. We're going to call that, refer to that as the net. So here's the net. Select my object and then go to the arrow key. You'll notice that in here, I can still wrap my object. And then once I'm done with that, I will continue by answering the following questions. The first one is, how is the cube related to the rectangular prism? In order for me to answer that, I have to think about what I did to construct the cube and what I just did to construct the rectangle. Once you've answered that question, you'll move on. And the next section will be for you to construct a triangular prism. Now, the only difference between a rectangular prism and a triangular prism is how we start. When we first did this shape, we started with a rectangle. That was the first thought. So in order to make this one, I have to start with a triangle. You'll answer the questions below, and the last set of instructions are for you to create your own original prism. That should be something that is a lot more, I guess, imaginative, maybe more sides, maybe you'll test different things out. This is completely your choice. And of course, you'll answer the questions in the bottom. Okay, so that's it. That's all you have to do. You can watch this video several times if necessary, so you can kind of review the steps. All right. Thank you.